Pokemon is a series that obviously is centered around video games, but has since expanded into literally the highest grossing media franchise of all time. Which means Pokemon is just about everywhere, on TV, in manga, in trading cards, and more. While all of these other mediums are all based on the content of the games, they all tend to take their own creative liberties as well, and because of that, we sometimes end up with completely new kinds of Pokemon appearing in these various media that don't exist in the games at all, which naturally can be pretty eye-catching, and it's exactly what we're talking about today, so let's take a look. Speaking of taking a look, sometimes there are situations where you don't want other people taking a look at what you're doing, and that is where today's sponsor, Surfshark, comes in. Surfshark is a VPN provider, and VPNs are huge in making sure your information is protected when using the internet. VPNs can also grant you access to content that may be blocked in your area, so they're basically essential for anyone who uses the internet regularly, and Surfshark is definitely a great way to go in that department. Surfshark allows you to use their service on an unlimited number of devices at the same time with just one subscription, and they have apps for every platform. PC, Mac, iOS, Android, smart TVs, you name it, Surfshark can cover it. In addition to the protection though, one of the best uses for a VPN, as I mentioned, is that it gives you the full power of the internet without all the blockage. And for instance, this can give you access to tons of Netflix shows and other streaming content that you wouldn't normally have access to. For example, if you're in the US, you might have been pretty bummed when The Office and Friends left Netflix last year, but they're still available in other countries, so with Surfshark, you can get right back to watching like it never left. And to make it that much easier, Surfshark is going to hook you up with the deal of a lifetime. If you use my link in the description and use code HIPHOP at checkout, they're going to give you 83% off a subscription and an extra 3 months for free. Plus, they also have a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk whatsoever to at least try it out. So try it out for yourself with the link below and a huge thank you to Surfshark for supporting the channel. Okay, so starting us off, we're actually going to begin with several Pokemon that are all part of one group. These Pokemon come from the manga, specifically the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga, which is the first Pokemon manga that ever existed. In Chapter 3, which deals with Red fighting his first gym battle against Brock, we get a glimpse at Brock's Pokemon collection, and we see many Pokemon that have never appeared anywhere else in the franchise. In fact, the closest these Pokemon actually come to resembling any kind of recognizable creature is with this Pokemon, who actually looks a lot like Karibo from Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyway, as you can see, there are several strange Pokemon on display here, but it's actually par for the course with this manga, if you can believe it, as it is very strange and kinda just does whatever it wants with regards to the main canon. Even still, however, it's pretty cool to see some mysterious, unknown Pokémon in any capacity, even if they aren't really regarded as official by the rest of the franchise. Another similar situation also occurs in the Pokémon Pocket Monsters manga, this time with Professor Oak's Pokémon collection. In the first chapter, we see Red and his Clefairy get into a battle with Blue and his Charmander, which ultimately results in Professor Oak's lab getting destroyed in the process. This throws a bunch of Oak's Pokémon, who are still in their Pokéballs, into the air, which allows us to get a good look at them, and what we see is again a bunch of Pokémon that have never appeared anywhere else in the franchise. Just like Brock's collection, they come in all shapes and sizes, and while again the nature of the manga does kind of lessen how seriously you can take the appearance of something like this in terms of it being official, it is still an official Pokemon manga at the end of the day, so Pokemon like this are still way cool to see regardless. While the manga is indeed a rich source for these kinds of Pokemon that don't exist in the main series games, it's not the only source, as we've also seen this happen in the anime. 
The one Mon in particular that I wanted to highlight in this section comes from the Pokemon Origins miniseries. During the show, we can see Red challenging various gyms, and in Brock's gym, we're able to see a cat-like Pokemon with wings. While it is just a statue, however, it definitely would have to be depicting a Pokemon of some kind, and it's clearly one that we haven't seen in the games before. It's also interesting considering that Pokemon Origins very closely follows the plot of the original games, like down to the T almost, so it's curious that the Rhydon statues that normally appear in the gyms would be replaced with this creature instead. It was also clearly a deliberate choice, so where did it come from? Does it date back farther than just Pokemon Origins? Could it have been planned for the games at all? I think that is very much a possibility given the circumstance, but for now, it's just a case of another mysterious Pokemon that has only ever appeared outside of the games. Another interesting anime-exclusive Pokemon is a pre-evolution for Celesteela. Well, kind of. Celesteela obviously doesn't have a pre-evolution in the games, but in the anime episode, Rise and Shine Starship, we actually get to see what a baby, or pre-evolved form, of Celesteela looks like. The interesting thing here is that usually, when we see younger or baby forms of Pokémon in the anime that don't actually have pre-evolutions, they just appear as smaller versions of the Pokémon a lot of the time but this Celesteela baby actually has a unique design. Just like the cat with wings from before, it's as possible as anything else that this design could have been pulled from Game Freak's vault, maybe when Celesteela was going to have a pre-evolution, or at the very least, when the idea was being explored during the development phase. It very possibly could have just been made for the anime as well, but either way, it does give you a glimpse into what lies within the vastness of Ultra Space beyond what we get to see in the games. Sometimes, in addition to new Pokémon species, we also get to see special forms of actually official Pokémon that don't appear in the games either, even though the base Pokémon does. For instance, Vulpix is a Pokémon that has been around since the beginning. In its Pokédex entries, it states that when Vulpix are born, they have one tail, but this isn't something that we ever get to see in the games. However, it does appear in the manga, specifically in the Pokémon Battle Frontier manga. Here we get to see what a baby Vulpix with one tail actually looks like, and it's something that opens up a whole new window into the life of this Pokémon. There were actually plans as well for Vulpix to get a pre-evolution at one point, as early as Generation 1 in fact, so with that idea officially having been on the table already, who knows, maybe someday we will get to see this form of Vulpix in the games. Vulpix is not the only official Pokémon with forms that only appear outside of the games, however. Arbok is another Kanto Pokémon who is well known for having different forms, even in the games. This is a key feature of Arbok as a Pokémon, where it is said that the pattern on its chest differs from area to area, but in the games we only get to see a couple of the many forms that are said to exist. Outside of the games is a different story, however, and many different Arbok patterns have appeared in the anime, manga, and even the TCG. It's a shame that they didn't keep this going for Arbok in the games, but it is always something that they could reintroduce down the road. So hopefully they do so, because it would make Arbok as a Pokémon much more interesting than it currently is. Yet another Kanto Pokémon who has received an additional form that has yet to make its debut into the games is this Ice-type Snorlax. This special Snorlax appeared in the anime in the Pikachu short Snorlax Snowman, which also featured as an episode of Pokémon Chronicles. 
The episode is basically just Pokemon's version of Frosty the Snowman, so its officialness should be taken with a grain of salt, but also an Ice-type Snorlax is an Ice-type Snorlax regardless of the situation. While it obviously hasn't appeared in the games at all, this is just begging to serve as inspiration for a regional variant someday. And with Snorlax being such an iconic Pokemon, and a Kanto Pokemon at that, who tend to get the benefit of the doubt for these kinds of things, and because a Yeti-like form of Snorlax would work perfectly, I feel like this one should only be a matter of time before we get to see it in the games as well, because the opportunity is just too good to pass up. Sticking with the anime, this next one is one that is very interesting. As Professor Oak describes it, this ancient Pokemon fossil and or artifact first appeared in the episode Fossil Fools, and as is the theme here, it's not a Pokemon we've ever seen in the games, but it is very similar to Claydol, who of course debuted in Generation 3. There's a bit of an inconsistency here though, because the anime episode that this fossil debuted in premiered in September of 2000, before Gen 3 had even been announced and before Claydol even existed. With that in mind, could this have been some kind of foreshadowing by the anime of what was to come? After all, Gen 2 was the current thing at the time, so it's not that much of a stretch to think that the next generation could have been teased. Maybe this is what Claydol looked like at the time before its design was changed. However, if that were the case, then there's another inconsistency, because this same fossil creature would make another appearance in the anime almost 10 years later towards the end of Generation 4. So clearly, this fossil is considered important enough by the creators to give reoccurring appearances to, but if it was connected to Claydol somehow, why doesn't it look like Claydol in what was at the time the Gen 4 timeframe? Maybe it is actually a beta design and making it a fossil is a way to symbolize that and also tease what is to come at the same time. Or maybe it's something else entirely, who knows. Since this one is known to have popped up more than once, however, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled to see if it ever appears again in the future. Next, we're going to go from the anime back to the manga, and take a look at yet another Pokemon from the Pokemon Pocket Monsters manga that never appears in the games. Debuting in the second chapter is this little blobby guy who was actually captured by Red in the Viridian Forest, but never actually received a name. The only thing that's known about it specifically is that it's a bug type, and it even made a second appearance amongst Brock's Pokemon collection that we talked about earlier. As mentioned, this manga is the only place this mysterious Pokemon appears in, however, it's also thought that it could just be a Diglett, due to its overall similarities to Diglett and the fact that the Pokemon in this manga tend to look a little different compared to their official designs. I would like to think that it is a mysterious manga-exclusive Pokemon, especially since it was mentioned to be Bug-type, but unfortunately, we'll probably never know for sure. Finally, also coming from the manga, we have a fan-made Pokemon. Yes, that's right, a fan-made Pokemon who doesn't exist in the games, but was featured in official Pokemon material, literally the dream of pretty much every Pokemon fan out there. Pokemon has many specialty manga out there in addition to the main one, similar to the games, and one of those specialty manga is Magical Pokemon Journey. Well, on the title page of chapter 18 of this manga, known as The Best Gift Ever, a Pokemon named Marin appears that only ever appears in this manga and only on this title page. And yes, it was created by a fan. According to the manga's author, Yumi Sukarino, a contest was held in Japan to draw Pikachu's friend, with the winner getting their design featured in the actual manga which ultimately became Marin. 
Considering how widespread fan art and fan-made Pokemon designs are, it's awesome that they did this in any kind of official capacity. And although it makes sense why they haven't done it for the games, it would be amazing if they actually did someday. So there you have it, those were some Pokemon that don't exist in the games. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, cause it really helps out. And with that said, I'll be back with another one very soon. Until then, as always, thank you so much for watching, I love you all, and I will smell you guys later.